It's time for the Sports Report with your host, Mike Prince. For scores, updates, and highlights from Waller County area, the Sports Report is your one-stop spot. And now let us join in today's program. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. We are live here from Cypress, Texas at the Buffalo Wild Wings location where we are moments away or the gathering for selection process 2014 for the defending, a four-time defending champions, the Lady Panthers of Prairie View A&M University. My name is Mike Prince. We are excited to be here to give you this exclusive coverage as the Lady Panthers await to find out where they'll be headed in the first round playing of the NCAA tournaments. It has been a wild ride for the Lady Panthers. Only one player who has been selected to the all-conference team, and that being Jeanette Jackson. Loran Washington, who leaves with four championship rings. We'll get a chance to talk with her later on in her disposition on feeling and looking overlooked. We have scheduled to talk President George Wright of Prairie View A&M University. We also have Miss uh, LaVan Washington, Jeanette Jackson, Shamaya Brooks, Alexis Parker, and we have much more for you here at Wild Wing, Buffalo Wild Wings here in Cypress, Texas. My name is Mike Prince. We're going to take a quick 30-second break, and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the official voice of Waller County Athletics. As a matter of fact, we'll take a 60-second break, and we'll be right back. What if I told you that for $36, you could make a big difference? At $36 a year, you can become a listening partner with the Open Mic Broadcast Network. This annual donation would help us continue the success of our broadcast throughout Walla County. Visit our website at ktorradio.com and become a listening partner today. Serving the community through faith and athletics, the Open Mic Broadcast Network. All right, welcome back here to the special edition of the Sports Report. I have with me athletic director for the four-time defending champion, Lady Panthers, Ashley Robinson. How you doing, my man? Doing good. How you doing? Man, doing real good. Hey, this is becoming uh, an old hat right now, huh? Yeah, you know, you know, anytime you can win four championships in a row, you know, that's, that's I mean, that speaks a lot for your, your, your program. It speaks a lot for your alumni. It speaks a lot for your supporters. It speaks a lot for your institution as a whole and a lot for your, your coaches and the administration that you have supporting you. Now, what you got going on right now, there's a process of waiting to see what happens. Now, people from the outside looking in, they don't know there's a lot of money on the line right now. Right. Uh, you got travel expenses, mm-hmm. hotel expenses. Mm-hmm. So I know from a managerial point of view, you want the shortest distance possible, but then you also want the great experience right. for the girls to travel. And, and, you know, my number one thing is experience for the student athlete. You know, and, and, the, and the, you know, the great thing about making it to the NCAA tournament you know, the NCAA take care of, of your travel, and they take care of your, of your day-to-day and all the, you know, the, the logistics that you need to be successful on, on this travel. So, you know, it's almost like they, you know, they cheat. Te- treated like it's you know an NBA team traveling or a professional team travel so it's it's good to get your student athletes to be able to get that experience and say hey I got that NCAA pin that nobody else could get unless you make it to the NCAA tournament so you know you know I, I speak volumes when you talk about student athlete experience as a former student athlete and a former basketball player you know a lot of us have the opportunity to do some of the things that our student athletes are doing and 
and and that I just get praise off that. You know, you know, it, it brings chills down in my back when I see our student athletes being successful, and some of the things that we go through on the day to day in administration and preparing for the season, getting our coaches prepared, and hey, coaches coming to the AD and say, I need this, I need that to be successful. And as a as an athletic director in administration, you got to do your your job is to support your program. Support the athletic department. Support your student athletes, and 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 at the end of the day, you get a you get a result like this when you do what you're supposed to do as an administration. Well, I don't have to explain to you about the emotion that I feel with it. Uh, I, I've been apologizing since Saturday for uh, breaking down after the uh, uh, just being a part of this thing. When uh, a lot of people said that high school was the best years of their life, but college mm -hmm. is definitely the best years of your life. And when you're a part of something and you see the success and you, you see behind the scenes mm -hmm. how people are internalizing and going mm -hmm. through, and then from that old player experience yourself, you, you, you just appreciate what it takes to get this far. And uh, I've told you all numerous times, and I'll say it again over there, thank you all for allowing us to be a part of the process and uh, it's truly been a, a labor of love for us and uh, pure joy and excitement for each and every one of my family's connected to it uh you i mean you got one of them fancy watches over there working too huh I just a, just a couple of emails i'm trying to make sure <laughs> you know, I get, i'm gonna get a couple nca emails so i want to make sure i can catch all the emails that, man that's all right so man miss a beat. Maybe, maybe maybe we need to talk after this man see what i need to do to get me one <laughs> just win my four championships <laughs> <laughs> I have coach, uh, I say uh, coach, but athletic director Ashley Robinson for the Prairie View A&M University Panthers. Uh, we are at Buffalo Wild Wings uh, Selection Tuesday or Monday, if you will. The Lady Panthers, four-time defending champions. Uh, this is becoming an old hat for them. They are ready to go and see who they got next. It's a next man up or next woman up in this case, mm -hmm. and it's going to be. You can see right now that they're excited, but. They've been down this road before, and, and uh, talking with Coach Brown throughout the season, she's talking about that next level. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's a good thing when you're used to winning that you expect a little bit more. Right. You know, you know Coach Brown has did a great job. You know, it, you know, a lot of our fans and alumni got to understand that, you know, Coach Brown was a part of the three three championships you know she was a part of the time you know going out and recruiting student athletes doing the day-to-day -day things a part of you know coach Wilson program and, and when coach Wilson came in as a young coach she did a great job carrying on coach Cooper and you know the interesting part about this is you, you know you look at you look at coach Cooper she just won a conference championship you look at coach Wilson at Baylor they just won a conference championship and you look at you know PV just won a conference chance. So it's a great time to be a part of the Panther family. You know, all our women's basketball coaches in the last, you know, the last three basketball coaches, all are in the NCAA tournament. So, you know, that, that speaks volumes about our program. That, 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 that speaks some of the things that we're doing to make our administrator and our coaches and our student athletes successful. That we, we're, we're really doing a great job, you know, in administration, our alumni and our fans. And, and I can't say enough about our alumni. You know, you know, we have alumni, you know, that, that always, you know, doing things. And, 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 and whether it's just an encouraging word, you know, being positive. You know, you know, I'm a positive and I'm an optimistic type guy. You know, I talk to you, Mike, all the time, and I talk about, you know, best is yet to come. Yes, you know, sir. You know, people, people always say, you know, the best kept secret. But, you know, like I said before, the secret is coming out the bag, and it's almost about to jump out on you right now. <laughs> so we, you know, we, 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 you know, I'm, I'm very excited now. I, I think you can hear it in my voice, and and I'm just excited for our student athletes and for the institution. You know, any way you can, anytime you can market and ran your institution by winning a championship. I think that just speaks volume for your program. They're, they're winning championships, and more importantly, they're graduating. Right. And as an African-American athlete, that is quintessential to make sure. Yeah, winning is great, you know, but that's another thing they can't take. They can't take away that degree. They can't right. take away that you've earned this right to be called a professional in whatever your studies are. Right, and, 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 and I tell people all the time, you know, from a recruiting standpoint, on the academic side, PV makes it easy. Make yes, it sir. very easy. We have some of the best academic programs in the nation. <laughs> you know, you look at, you know, look across the board and you talk about, you look on the athletic side, you look on the academic side, everything matches up. You know, you can come in here and get your quality education, you know, and, and we talk about the percentage of the average salary once you graduate from PV. We got the highest among all HBCUs. Yes, sir. So, you know, you think about it's, it's just a great time. I say it all the time. It's a great time to be a Panther. 
I mean, you can come in here and win you some championships, get you a great, you know, a great degree, graduate program, and for a university that speaks volumes. I mean, has a great and a rich tradition. Yes, sir. Academic tradition. I mean, that speaks a lot. Yes, sir. Now, let's change just for a moment, mm -hmm. and we have to recognize the outstanding job that the Southwestern Athletic Conference did with mm -hmm. pulling off this tournament down at the Toyota Center. Yeah, I, I think that was that's a great venue. You know, I always say any time that you can get your student athletes to play in a NBA or NFL arena, that is a great experience for your student athletes. You know, that's a vision that every student athlete wants to have, to be able to say, I played in the Toyota Center. And I think the conference, you know, Commissioner Dual Sharp and the conference office did a great job of, of, of picking basketball and football. I, you know, football is every line stadium. You know, over the past years in football, we all, every time, you know, it's time for the SWAC championship, it's always cold, it's always raining. We don't have to worry about that problem now. You know, we, that's something that he, he did a great job of, of handling that situation by bringing it to Reliance Stadium, you know, an indoor facility. You know, in the basketball, you're talking about the Toyota Center, a great facility. So, you think about our student athletes now, they can always say, I played in a, in a professional arena. Now, these are two year or three year contracts that they have for these venues? Uh, they have three year. Okay. Three year contracts for, for our country for the basketball and football. Well, so this was the first of three for both. Right. It would be good for us to be having all three of these championships. Then they'd be trying to get it out of Texas real quick, won't right, they? Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's always great. You know, people don't understand that how it feels to have both of your teams in the, in the SWAT championship. And, you know, our, our men's, we, we had a couple ups and downs this year. and, and But I think, you know, we, we're going to finish off good next year. You know, we have a, a senior ball club coming back next year in our men's programs. And, you know, we had a couple years where we had some a couple restrictions that we had to, you know, uh, fight off for our program for us recruiting and things of that nature. So a couple of NCAA deals, you know. But I think Coach Rim has, has fought through that. And I think now it's time for him to step on that next level. And he's, he's going to have a chance to coach his seniors next year, uh, you know, bring his seniors back. And, 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 and we're going to get back next year. You know, no. I think we, I'm optimistic about that, men and women. And, and, and you know, we, we just, you know, we, we put ourselves in a situation where we just kind of ran out of gas. Any, anytime you play, you know, you know, 12 games and nine games in 12 days, you know, that's that's tough. And, you know, you know. I, Texas Southern had a, had a chance to get a day off. But at the end of the day, we take responsibility because we put ourselves in that situation. But, I, you know, I, I can assure you that our men's basketball program and our women's basketball program is definitely going into the right direction with, you know, with what we're doing. You know, anytime, like I said, both of our teams are in the SWAC tournament. You know, in the SWAC championship. No, I was going to say the, the championship. Put you know, it, make you think it about how, how many teams have done that. You know, we've made history uh, Saturday with Ben. Uh, men and women of both teams being in the tournament, so and doing it in Houston, you know, at home. So I think, you know, I think I, I I'm, I'm definitely think, you know, we have some things we have to work on. I can't sit here and say, yeah, I'm just uh, pleased with our men's basketball program, but I can say, I can accept the challenges that we have, and we will move forward, and we will be successful. As you say, walking in with wi eyes wide open, so right. knowing what the what the t uh, t issue at hand is. Right now, and you're talking about it. You just saw that Trey Haygood. And and Coach Rim summed it up much. They just ran out of gas, right, and he right. he was he was bent. He right. was he was done. But but you got to give them an A for effort and mm -hmm. the heart and determination to show. And this experience that they gained from this right. should really catapult them for. I can't wait for the next season to get started. I, I, I mean, I'm excited about the season. I mean, you, you think about it, they come in and, and and then you know they come in and they play three teams, three teams that wasn't eligible. For the, you know, for the tournament, you know, it came in and, and we had a good, you know, good night against Mississippi Valley, and it came in and you played number one team, Southern Jaguars, and I mean, we didn't just win the ball game. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we won the ball game. We 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 actually run, and it was impressive the way yes. we won. Yes, you know, yeah. We have to remember it's family programming, so right. we can't say exactly. Right. <laughs> right, you know, but you know, I just you know, I just I win. You know, I can just say it was an impressive win. Yes, sir. Exactly. Uh, uh, athletic director Ashley Robinson. With the Prairie View Adam University Panthers, we are live from Buffalo Wild Wing in Cypress, Texas. The Sports Report Special Edition, uh, as you like to, as we like to do, we give you fresh content on a daily basis. Uh, check us out at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday. Uh, man, I really, I, I am, I am really excited about the direction and how everything is working out. 
Uh, I thank you for this opportunity and this time uh, for coming. Now, I'm going to ask you something. Um, if, they, if they got cargo space for a brother, we will make it happen. <laughs> We're definitely going to make it happen. Definitely going to make it happen. <laughs> we'll definitely make it happen. Well, look, I appreciate it very much, my friend. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. This is the Open Mic Broadcast mm -hmm. Network and a special edition of the Sports Report. Keep it where you got it, and we'll be right back. The Waller Bulldogs, the Hempstead Bobcats, the Royal Falcons, and the Prairie View A&M University Panthers. It's baseball season, and the Open Mic Broadcast Network will be there to give you all the scores and updates of Waller County baseball. Keep it locked right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the station designed with you in mind. Serving the community through faith and athletics. The Open Mic Broadcast Network. All right, welcome back to our special edition of the Sports Report on location here live at Buffalo Wild Wings. Mike Prince, I have just been blessed with the president of the, I almost said the United States, but of Prairie View A&M <laughs> University, and that is Dr. George Wright. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing quite well. Thanks for asking. All right, well, thank you for taking the time to come and be with us. Now, I know this has become almost like second nature this is the fourth time in as many years that you're in this seat but from a presidential perspective how do you reflect on these things okay. right? um, you're correct it's the fourth year in a row but you never take things like this for granted uh, every season is a challenge and when you've won one championship the second one becomes much more difficult the same with the third and now with the fourth on the one hand it, it raises the expectation and maybe the players understand that, but it also puts a bullseye on you, so to speak, to where the other schools are definitely up in playing you. So this, this becomes very rewarding, and I suspect every year when you win, it becomes much more rewarding because, again, of the challenges and of the expectation that you almost are expecting to win. And so if you had a good season but didn't win it, then it would almost seem as if you had a disappointing season when that's not the case uh, in many instances. But we're very, very excited. And I would also say, as a president of a university, whenever you're successful in, in an athletic endeavor, it brings very positive attention to your university and not just to the sport, but to the university overall. Uh, that there's no question about the connection between academics and athletics and that I can use the metaphor that many other people say that athletics is a window to your university or athletics is the front door to your university or the front porch or something like that. But clearly, the university and the athletic program are often synonymous in the eyes of, of so many people. Yes, sir. As a graduate, of class of 93 it does me uh honor and 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 great joy to be able to present these broadcasts and the coverage that we've been able to do now you've you've served the university uh well over 10 years now you right. say so you got your feet deep and wet right now. well it's, it's kind of like again the same comments i made about the women's basketball success every year that you're on a job it does not get easier it actually becomes much more challenging, much more difficult, but it, it's an honor to serve at a, at a university at this level for one year, much less now in my 11th year. So I am actually very, very excited and still humbled by this opportunity. And one of the things that makes it that way is that you're constantly meeting new students, that a senior class goes out, whether it's in athletics or in academics, and then you start all over with new students, and they come in with the, oh, maybe a little bit of the fright, a little bit of the excitement that, that freshmen bring to something. So, so I, I, I'm constantly renewed by just being in contact 
uh, with these wonderful students. Now, now, Dr. Wright, I'm going to ask you one of these questions. Okay. And uh, it's not intended to put you on the spot, but okay. I'm going to give you a fair one. It's going to okay. put you on the spot. Okay. If you were to use one word to summarize your legacy okay. for the work that you put in at Prairie View, what would that word be? Uh, well, if I was going to use one word, it would be inquisitive, I guess, in the sense that I'm constantly trying to ask the question why or to raise the question why or to, to ask people to just challenge or to think about things or to do things, to look at things differently in that regard. I, I love intellectual oh, ideas and I love just talking with the people a lot of time with hypotheticals or I love I, a word that I often use and I mean it in a positive that I love to quote argue with mm -hmm, people and mm -hmm. what that really means is that I like stating my position whether it's on who's the best basketball team or who's the best historian or what's the best program in certain kind of areas and that's what I, I like I like the exchange of ideas I have a perspective but I really respect and appreciate hearing other people's perspectives and and I tell folk all the time it, it would be oh it just wouldn't feel right if I read a book and I didn't have a chance to discuss it with somebody. And they then say to me, yeah, but you made this point about this book, but this book also had the following. Or just pick any movie, good, bad, or indifferent. If I went to see a movie, I want to then share that with other people and then hear what they have to say about the movie. So for me, it's, it's, learn, it's, it's loving the intellectual enterprise of the inquisitive nature of just talking with people. When I'm talking to Coach Brown a few moments ago, I was just asking her about, okay, you played Texas Southern earlier twice, and I saw the game at Prairie View where we lost. It came down to the last minute of the game. So uh, what did you do differently? And she said the, the kinds of things they did and what she had discovered about Texas Southern and things like that. And that's what I find interesting, the strategy that has to be part of of coach. It's not just running up and down. It's really trying to think through and say, okay, we're going to make Texas Southern do this in that regard. And of course, obviously, they've done the same thing and they're going to try to make you do something in that regard. So that's what I, I love the strategy uh, that goes into something. Well, so whether it's in athletics or again in academics. Uh, so, no, that doesn't necessarily put me on the spot, but that's what I. I hope people would say that this guy was a real intellectual and he loved to have a free exchange and that while he had his opinion, he really does respect your opinion and your right to state your opinion and the right for you, for you to even change your mind <laughs> <laughs> about your opinion. That's part of it, too. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, the, the power of influence. There right. you go. Well, I have President Wright from the University of Prairie View, A&M University. I, I really feel like I'm a, I'm a blessed man right now to be able to have you sitting well. this next to me and offer up your time for me on this. Um, pretty excited. Do you have your preference of where you'd like to see the young ladies go? No, I don't. Uh, I, I don't at all. It, it will all be challenging, but, but it's just rewarding to get to this point in, in that regard. And I hope they enjoy the experience, uh, the opportunity in that regard and not be uh, you know overwhelmed by it or intimidated by it or anything like that but you have to somehow enjoy uh as well as work very hard so no i don't have a a, a preference like most people i don't need to go somewhere where it's real cold but, <laughs> but again, I don't, maybe i shouldn't have said that just now they probably heard that and they'll make sure we go somewhere really cold yes sir in now that regard. i i played baseball at preview and there was old coach he's both of them were deceased now john tankersley and raymond burgess and he used to explain to us all the time he says some of the people that you're meeting right now 20 years from now they'll be your best that's friends right, that's right. and with the experience that they're gaining right now and they're young and they, they it really hadn't sunk in yet but there's something about crossing over that threshold of 45 mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and you begin to reflect on just how blessed you've really been mm -hmm. and how you've accomplished some of the things that seeing when you look back, you don't even know how you made it right. if it had not been without the grace of God. And I, I, don't, I don't mind if anybody know how I feel about that. Mm -hmm. But it, w w this is a magical time for these youngsters' oh, yeah. lives right now. Oh, yeah. 
Well, well, I tell students all the time that, that let's say if you have all of the challenges that a student has, they're studying, they have families, they might not have nearly the amount of money that they would like to have, it's hard for them to view this as a great time in their lives, but they'll look back and say, my goodness, I was 19 or 20, <laughs> and I didn't have a lot of the other responsibilities that come with life. And so you have to somehow enjoy that. Someone, I'm not hardly saying things that your listeners have not heard before, but it is important that you enjoy every aspect of your life, that every part of your life will be different. Um, and I think back to being a college student, uh, I got married while I was a college student. Same here. And so my <laughs> wife and I, we had almost 10 years of marriage without children. Then for 29 years, we had children in the home with us and now we're at a phase where we don't have children who would have ever thought i'd look back and say oh i wish i had children at home again <laughs> well i got you know? so i got one and right so, here eating you saw that mountain of food right, he's eating right you so <laughs> you have to enjoy all of it but college is such a wonderful time and and i tell students it's a time to just learn a lot about yourself to question various things just ask the question why you know if you go up and ask people a lot of times just why sometimes folk act like you said something really ugly to them but all you would do is say well just why why do you all do that you know why should we do that or something like that and folk ought to be able to tell you why it is we do what we do and there go or if you can't really explain it then maybe you shouldn't be doing it I call that a sense of that. a sense of purpose. Yeah, got to so, have a sense of purpose. But there's no question that it's this is a wonderful time in their lives. Well, I thank you so much yes, for sir. this opportunity, uh, Dr. Wright. Anybody you'd like to give a shout out to before we well, close this I, segment? I, out? There are just so many people in my ten plus years here at Prairie View who I've met, and if I named anybody, it would do a disservice to so many others. But there, my shout out is to all of you people who are affiliated with Prairie View and the things that you have done to make Prairie View a better university. I mean, and there's so many different ways, whether it's your time, your money, your encouragement to others or whatever, but we thank all of you. And Prairie View is a better university because of all of you uh, working on behalf of your university. President George Wright for the Prairie View a &M University beautiful and the best college on this side of heaven. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Hello, this is Mike Prince with the Open Mic Broadcast Network. I would like to personally extend an invitation to you and ask if you would join forces with us by becoming a listening partner at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Your annual subscription of $24 would allow us to produce Waller County related programs with a dynamic lineup that we have such as live broadcast coverage for our sporting events and community parades that we have joy at bringing you throughout the year. For more more information on becoming a listening partner, dial 832-213-8824, or you can simply send an email to ombnetwork at gmail.com. Be sure to visit our website at www.ktorradio.com. Thank you for all the support and the love that you've shown us here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, and we look forward to joining forces with you. All right, welcome back. We are live here at the Buffalo Wild Wing in Cypress, Texas. It is Selection Monday, and I am being graced now with the presence of the Pulse Girl. She delivers all the time, Miss Shamaya Brooks. How you doing? I'm fine, and you? All right, did you ever get your mom hooked up and set up to go? <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I go ahead and say hi to your mommy before you get started. Hey, Mama and Daddy and Maya. All right, now tell her their names. Everybody need to know who their names are. 
<laughs> yeah, big time. I'll, yeah, let me let me go back and repeat that. The athletic director himself, Mr. Ashley Robinson. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, all the way down to the sweet peach Georgia State. Yes, sir. Shamaya, big time <laughs> Brooks. How you doing? I'm and she gives me you. a high five. Now go ahead and tell the folks who your mom and daddy is. Rochelle Brooks, Willie Brooks, and Tamaya Brooks, my mom, my daddy, and my sister. All right, very good. Well, look, welcome and thank you for being a part of this. Um, it's been been a roller coaster ride for you, huh? Yes, sir. All right, we've literally watched you grow up this year, and just reflect back on from when you started to where you are now, and how do you summarize this season? Um, well, when I first got started, I came in not having as much confidence as I have right now. And then I gained that confidence from my teammates telling me, you know, every day of practice that you can dominate. My coaches always telling me, like, I won't be, I'm only as good as I believe I am. So they kept telling me, like, I can run it in the paint or whatever. And I had to finally wake up and believe that. Then I started playing my game. And I think I did a pretty good job. You think you did a good job? Yes, well, sir. I think you're being a little bit modest because you were – voted on the all-tournament team. Yes, sir. You know, you got that nice piece of hardware <laughs> to show. Where, as a matter of fact, where is it? Did you bring it with you? No, sir. I left it in what, the room. What? You left it in? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh, no. I know your mom and dad is ready to see that thing, huh? Yes, sir. They okay, are. Okay. <laughs> you better not drop it. Whatever you do, you better not drop it. And I know they can't. They, I can't hear them right now. They said she showed sure enough. Better not drop it. <laughs> yes, so, so, look. How did you get to Prairie View? How did you get your journey here to Prairie View? Um, as far as, like, the recruiting? Uh-huh. Uh, well, my high school coach and Coach Tron, they actually went to college together. And when he came here, whatever, he told the coaches about me, and they came and saw me play a high school game, and then they started following me, and then they offered me. I came down and took a visit, and I knew instantly that I wanted to come to Prairie View because it felt like home. You knew it. Yeah, like, you know what? Isn't it amazing? You know, you hear a lot of people that say, man, I don't like it way out there in the country. But if Prairie View was for you, it instantly just gets all into yes, your sir. heart, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, because Prairie View produces what? Productive people. There you go. Don't be <laughs> guessing about that. You, you had it right. We're going to do it again because you all pausing. Prairie View, Prairie View produces what? Productive people. All right. Very good. I got Shamaya Big Time Brooks in the house with me. We are here at Buffalo Wild Wing in Cypress, Texas. It is Selection Monday for the NCAA Tournament. Do you have a preference for where you'd like to go? It doesn't matter wherever we go. We're going to try to go win. Yeah, you're going to try to go win. That's what I want to hear. You're going to make it happen because you are the SWAC champion. Yes, sir. We you are. are the SWAC four-time champion, and they can't do nothing about that, huh? Nothing. As they say, <laughs> put that in your pipe and smoke it, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Now, Shamai, what's your major? Um, I'm a psychology major. Uh, oh, you want to get people, tell people that they crazy <laughs> and, and then have them pay you for it? Is that what, is that what you're trying to do, Shemai? No, sir. Uh, that's what it sounds like, a psychology major? <laughs> well, you, then you laugh because you know I'm telling the truth, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, you know you really, uh, you're going to need depression medication and antidepressant <laughs> medication, and that bill will be $450, please, <laughs> and 66 cents. And I want my 66 cents, too, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> now, what? Now, Samaya, do you have a minor that you my, minor in? No, sir. No, just straight. It's like a, you just going straight for the gusto. <laughs> yes, sir. You don't want to do nothing. You have thought about getting into broadcasting, maybe? Um, I was thinking about that, maybe sport broadcasting. You, you were yes, thinking sir. about doing some broadcasting? Yes, sir. Well, I tell you what, if you want, we can work it out where you can possibly do some baseball and softball games with us over the break here. I would like that. Yes, you would sir. like that? Yes, All sir. All right, Samaya, I know you had a chance to talk to mom. And, Dad, anybody else you want to give a shout-out to before we get ready? I know y'all don't want your food getting cold or anything <laughs> like that. Um, just everybody back home in the Greater Valley area, LaGrange, Georgia, and West Point, Georgia, everybody who supported me along the way. Well, it looks like they're about to do some selection process. We're going to let you get back over with your, your teammates and everything. Shamaya, big-time Brooks, <laughs> all-tournament team. <laughs> four-time champion doing a thing representing the georgia peach <laughs> now you from georgia you got to say georgia <laughs> oh Come you on. you don't want me to sing no, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> sing little magic sing little magic <laughs> Georgia, come See, on! You got, you got, you got it. Come on, come on, come on! With it. Make your mom and daddy proud. <laughs> they won't make them proud. <laughs> Shamaya Brooks, ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a break and we'll be right back. You listen to a special edition of the Sports Report right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network.
The Open Mic Broadcast Network is proud to announce that you can listen to Panthers basketball right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network as the Panthers will take on all oncomers in the Southwestern Athletic Conference 2014 basketball campaign. The tournament begins March 11th through the 15th, and you will catch all the action right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Serving the community through faith and athletics, the Open Mic Broadcast Network. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, We are live here at the Buffalo Wild Wings as we are waiting the selection process. And I have been now joined by freshman sensation, Miss Alexis Parker. How are you? I'm good. All right. Now, Alexis, um, we've been talking about your story throughout uh, the season, how you have had a battle within the battle, uh, but you've been able to stick it through. How are you feeling right now? Um, I'm pretty good. Um, now that I know that we won and we're on to the big dance, it's pretty cool. I feel like everything I've been through isn't in vain, so I'm pretty good. You're pretty good? Well, look, uh, I know you were pushing for that freshman of the year and uh, came up a little short, but you got something more important. You got the team hardware of being a champion. How disappointed were you that you didn't get that, that call? Um, really, when it comes to individual awards, I'm not really concerned. I'm more of a team player, team type person. So I wasn't really upset. I felt like I could have got it and I was supposed to get it. But, I mean, it is what it is. We it won is. a big, we won a ring. So I'm all right with it. Okay. Now that you have this experience under your belt, um, you're waiting now to see where you're going to play. Um, are, you, are you excited still? Or are you still having some of these butterflies right now? I still have butterflies. I have butterflies regardless. <laughs> <laughs> now, is there anyone back at home that you'd like to give a shout to? As you hear the roar of the crowd here, uh, they're going to find out who they want to play with. Um, I tell you what, I'm going to let you go back over there with your team so you can get a chance. And if it's all right, you can come back and we can finish this up. Is that all right? All right. That's all right. Cool. All right. Miss Alexis Parker uh, with the Lady Panthers. She's going to find out, going to see exactly where the Panthers are going to be going. It is now being announced as the Lady Panthers are going to be taking on Connecticut. They are going to be taking on Connecticut. Oh, my. The Lady Panthers will be taking on the Huskies, the Lady Huskies from University of Connecticut. They will be the 16th seed, so they will be traveling to the East Coast. They will be going to the East Coast to take on the Connecticut group. And, man, that is going to be something tough and something big. But if anybody can handle it, Coach Don Brown and company can handle it. Wow, the Lady Panthers will be taken on the number one seed, University of Connecticut Huskies. And we are going to take another break and we'll be back to hear the reflections from Coach Brown. We're going to see if we can get Coach Brown to come and see uh, her reflections and everything that they got going on. This is Mike Prince with the Open Mic Broadcast Network and a special edition of the sports report we're going to take another break and we'll be right back with more live coverage What if I told you that for $36, you could make a big difference? At $36 a year, you can become a listening partner with the Open Mic Broadcast Network. This annual donation would help us continue the success of our broadcast throughout Walla County. Visit our website at ktorradio.com and become a listening partner today. Serving the community through faith and athletics, the Open Mic Broadcast Network. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back here. Coach Don Brown is preoccupied right now, but we are working 
to get Coach Damon Moore to come by and speak with us as they are getting ready for to packing their bags to go on the East Coast to take on University of Connecticut. Coach Damon Moore is now coming over to get ready to talk to us. We see Coach Northern in the house. We get to turn him. There you go. Get it turned around that way, Coach. All right. We got you set and ready to go. Sir. All right. Coach Moore, how you doing, sir? All right. How you All doing, right. sir? Well, congratulations. You're taking Thank on you. the University of Connecticut. Yes, Lady sir. Lady Huskers, top-rated seed, and yes. you're going to the East Coast. Yes. A little bit further than where you were thinking about going. <laughs> well, yes, sir. But nonetheless, you're going to be uh, packing, and you're going to have some snow boots that you might have to put on there now. Well, well, well you, you understand, you know, I'm from the Midwest. I'm originally from Detroit, and, and you know, I lived in Ohio, so I'm used to uh, the Midwest type of weather. So, you know, going to uh, Connecticut, you know, I'm not I'm not too scared of the, of, the, of the cold. But since I've been here in Houston, I can say one thing. I love this weather. Except for the couple of icy days we had, but the weather. <laughs> Weather, you know, the environment at Prairie View, just everything about this area has been just so great. And it's been, you know, life changing for me, you know, as coming from, you know, my background. So, you know, I'm just I'm so I've been basically I've been so focused on this now, you know, since, you know, our win on Saturday. It's just like if we can make this for if we can somehow knock off the number one seed, I think this will put Prairie View in a whole different light you yes, know sir. so i yes, think sir. i think this is something that you know it's possible you know this is this is march madness you know we we <laughs> it's all about cinderella teams that's right so you know it, as long as our girls, you know, can believe that they can win, hey, anything's possible. Anything is possible. And, and we're going for the win. We're yes, not sir. going just to compete and be in all. We're going to win. We're going for the win. Exactly. That's what we're going for. Exactly. Now, Coach, this is your first year. Yes. And I'm an old Midwest boy myself. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Right, right. From the let, loop. Me tell you, let me tell you something, though. Yes, sir. I'm not going back to that cold weather, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I, that's what I'm saying. I love it. Hey, you know, I love this yeah, weather. Uh, now, it, when, it, your mama, when your mama say you didn't got soft with the weather, you know, I've been down know. there longer. <laughs> and, and, and you know what's so you know what's so funny? You know, here in Houston, when it gets a little cold, a little icy, they're shutting everything down. And I'm looking around like, really? <laughs> this is it? This, this, this is like the first day of winter yeah. up in the Midwest. Yeah, and, you yeah. know, and everybody's still going to work. Schools are still going. So, but, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really, you know, happy, you know, and just having all these people here, you know, to celebrate with us that had, you know, that really believed in us. It's really a great feeling. And, you know, with my background, you know, uh, I experienced going to the tournament um, when I was at Cleveland State. That's my alma mater. And um, I worked as a video coordinator for the women's team. And uh, they, you know, they won their conference and they had to play Notre Dame. And this was back in 2010. So it's definitely different because now I'm on the sidelines and I feel a part of the team and not somebody up in the bleachers, you know, just filming and breaking film down and nobody knows who I am. So this is like really, this is like a dream come true, you know. And again, if it wasn't for Coach Darn Brown, you know, I'll probably still be up in Ohio, you know, <laughs> depressed. So, I mean, this is, when I say this is a dream come true, it really, really, really is. Now, a lot of people that don't know, this is your first year with, with the university. Yes, at first year. And, and first year as a Division One assistant coach. Explain what it was like for you to get the call to say, "Hey, well, we got well, a position for you here." Well, you know what, what was what was funny. Um, you know, I've been known for working a lot of uh, high BCS uh, s uh, summer camps and elite camps. So when uh, Coach Brown called me, I was actually at the University of Iowa uh, working working uh, working the camp there, and. Um, she called me when we were going uh my team was going to play actually my my uh my team was going to play there and she called me and at first i didn't understand what she was asking me i thought she was just trying to help me look for a gig and i was like okay coach well you know if you find somebody you know that's willing to take me on you know i'm, I'm, I'm ready she was like damon you're not listening i'm talking about you working for me <laughs> and i was like i think before i could even say i could breathe i was like yes you know, I was like, yes, that's no doubt. So, 
um, that that's definitely you know, and then making the trek, driving fourteen hundred miles, you know, uh, in the span of two days from Ohio to you know Texas, you know, was definitely great. Um, I will say it has been a very eye-opening experience. A lot of stuff that I did not know, you know, goes on within a Division One school and program. You know, it is I, you know I've had a lot of peaks and valleys. So you know, it's been a learning experience this year. Next year, I feel I'm going to be stronger and better, and even help this team even more. But it's just been a great, great experience. And again, I you know I have to thank you know Coach Brown and excuse me, and also you know everybody else you know who had a part. But you know, I, I definitely feel honored. You know, we have a great group of. Uh, student athletes um, who are excelling you know not only on the floor but also in the classroom and that's definitely very important for me being a former teacher now you know I think education is key so you know um, I think we're seeing a, a, with Coach Brown at the helm we're seeing a, 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 an incline of not only our academics but also our play because you know this year we've had more conference wins than we've had before you know I, uh, I think at the end of the year you know uh, we're going to have our higher GPA is going to be much higher as the team GPA. So, I mean, we've been working really, really hard, you know, and I've been learning, you know, from Coach Brown and from Coach Griffin. So, you know, it's uh, it's definitely been great. And, you know, this, you know, Coach always says, you know, we're here to win rings. You know, and some people say <laughs> that and you're like, yeah, okay, that's, no, she's serious. You know, she, this is her fourth, you know, so this is my first. So, you know, I want to, you know, I want to get some more rings myself. So it's definitely been a great, great, great thing. And, you know, we're definitely going to work hard and get ready for UConn. So we're definitely not going to be a pushover team. So if anybody thinks that, think again. I know. Bring it on, right? Yes, sir. Now, you made, you made a mention that it was uh, a lot of things that you had to learn. What was your biggest learning curve that you had to adjust to coming to Division One? Really, one of the biggest things, not only the, uh, you know, some X's and O's is, like, different. Because where I'm coming, where I came from, we had a real, you know, it was inner city, high school, real basic. I'm lucky if I can get six or seven girls to come on the team. And out of those six or seven, I might only have three that can actually play. Um, but really, the biggest thing has been how everything is ran in the Division One. That's been basically the biggest learning curve. Uh, for me, it's just like how things are ran. Things are ran a whole lot different. <laughs> we have a lot more um, uh, 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 things to do, you know, so it's not just not only, you know, uh, uh, developing our student athletes it's just a lot of stuff just administrative stuff and you know just learning a lot of the rules and stuff like that so it's, that's more, it's more than just throwing on some, some it, tennis shoes yeah, and yes. grabbing a ball and yes, going for Augusta. yes and we all do that too but that's been the biggest thing but right. that's been the biggest learning curve so well look I'm, my man i want to want to say congratulations thank you sir welcome to the pv family hey this is this is tradition yes this sir. is this is something that you know i definitely understand and take you know, uh, 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 I'm very serious about this. We have to keep the tradition alive and keep it going. So, you know, we're going for f we're going for five next year, six after that. You know, and then definitely, you know, our ultimate goal is to go real deep into the uh, tournament. Yes, sir. That's the thing that we yes, want to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, First so year coach Damon Moore. Thank you. The, uh, Ohio by way of Detroit. Right. Now in Texas, yes. and I don't think he's coming back. No, 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 I don't think so. No, sir. <laughs> We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. You're listening to the special edition of the Sports Report live from Buffalo Wild Wings in Cypress, Texas. My name is Mike Prince, and we'll be right back. PV. The Waller Bulldogs, the Hempstead Bobcats, the Royal Falcons, and the Prairie View A&M University Panthers. It's baseball season, and the Open Mic Broadcast Network will be there to give you all the scores and updates of Waller County baseball. Keep it locked right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the station designed with you in mind. Serving the community through faith and athletics. The Open Mic Broadcast Network. All right, welcome back to the live, I guess the li I was going to say taping, but it's not a taping because we're live and live in color here at Buffalo Wild Wings. Mike Prince and the special edition of the Sports Report. 
I have been blessed now with the four time, first time as the top dog. You can't, no, no, you're good, you're good, you're good. Uh, Miss Dawn Brown, how you doing, Coach? I'm good, how are you? Uh, look, look, uh, you just got the draw. You're going to be taking on uh, Connecticut. Um, I know you plan to win, it didn't matter. They could have said uh, the LA Sparks. How do you feel about this matchup? Honestly, you know, Mike, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. Anytime that you have an opportunity to go to the big dance, to, to go to the NCAA tournament, you know, it's a very rewarding experience. But, you know, I'm a coach of themes. I'm, I'm a coach of, that loves to motivate my team. So, so my mindset, uh, and, and I'm going to carry this over to my team, is going to be is to compete, compete, and survive compete and survive so so we're definitely going to go there to play hard and and and, and you know and, and study this film and, and and watch watch film on UConn just like we would do any other team um you know I, I have a lot of respect for them they're undefeated uh having lost a game in, the, in in this in this uh this year this this 2013 2014 year but but we're going to go to compete and we're going to have a good time doing that as well okay now uh what now that you know where you're going what will your agenda consist of and when does it start well, uh, I believe that we will have an opportunity to leave 48 hours uh, before um, we play, and we play Sunday, it looks like. Um, so we possibly may leave Friday morning uh, or even Thursday afternoon. Uh, the NCAA will do all the travel arrangements and everything as far as uh, us departing and when we will get back. So um, that's just something for us to look forward to. Uh, I'm excited. I, I'm, I'm excited. I, I'm, I'm definitely excited. First time head coach uh, going to the big dance, you know, that that's a blessing, and I feel like, at this moment in my life, it's just I, I'm just favored. I'm just favored. Well, you know, I saw something out of you Saturday that I had not seen, and that was emotion come out of you. And I said, she is a girl. <laughs> and I saw, <laughs> Now, um, for those, this, you were under a lot of pressure, you know, the truth be told. Mm -hmm. Explain what that first year was like, especially the first third of the year, because I always say there are three seasons to college basketball, your non-conference, your conference, and then your tournament play. Well, you know, this has been a very, um, a very uh, challenging year for me as the first time a head coach. You know, young ladies that that ha have been used to me as an assistant is is certainly different as far as changing, uh, changing, changing hats and changing your role, because I was that outlet for them with our with our last head coach. So now I'm going to have to do a lot of the disciplinary um, actions and, and making sure that they're they're doing what they're supposed to do. So you know, that's that was a um, that was something that that they had to adjust to they had to make the adjustment to um you know they had to make the adjustment to, to that but you know overall you know, it's been a good year we have a a bunch of girls that believe in believe in uh, our system they believe in me um and you know you really can't ask for much more when you have a, a group of young ladies that's like that you know they'll, they'll run i believe that they'll run through a big wall for me and and those are the kind of kids that, that you continue to motivate, that you continue to push. That's why I'm so hard on them. I don't know if Shamaya talked about that song, but that's why I'm so hard on them because I know what they're, what they're capable of doing. You know, I'm going to love them when it's time to love them, but when it's time to step on that hardwood, it's time for you to be dogs. It's time to go. It's, it, we we got to go. We got to be intense. We got to play hard, and, and we got to be smart. There you go. There you go. Now, you say you were the outlet for them, so what was the, the main thing that you had to establish that now you are the one that they're going to need an outlet for. What you, I'm, I'm the coach. I can't be your friend right now. Right. So basically, you know, I have to do my own type of disciplinary actions as far as coming up with the system, uh, coming up with a, a rule book, and I gave them a 40-page rule book. A 40-page rule book? They have a, they, when you interview my next one, ask them about their rule book. <laughs> you know, but, you know, I want them to be responsible. You know, I don't want them to get caught up in, you know, traditional student activities. you got to understand you're a student athlete. You're here for a reason. You're handpicking for a reason. So, you know, you I have to constantly remind them is that, you know, the sacrifices that you have to make as a student athlete, as well as, you know, a basketball player for this women's basketball program, who's so rich on legacy and tradition and winning, you know, you're, you're a different type of student athlete. So you have to understand that and you have to know that. So in order to do that, you're going to have to be responsible. You can't go out and, and celebrate homecoming like all other students have celebrate homecoming because we're going to practice that next morning at 7 a.m. So, you know, it's, it's just a process for them. Um, 
but you know not only that they respond well and they understand when you can look at that trophy that's sitting over there across your face and you're cutting down a piece of the net I got text messages from them this morning you know just saying thank you coach I appreciate everything you've done I understand now but you know the reason why I was I was telling them so much I told them I said you know even my senior year my junior year I played behind a young lady Amy Williams which was um uh, most valuable player and defensive player of the year in one year but the SWAC and uh, 2004 she was 6'6 so there was no way Mike that I was going to be getting 20 and 30 minutes playing behind someone that was 6'6 so you know I, I you know I kind of not coasted a little bit but you know I worked hard here and there but you know a lot of games you automatically know that you're not going to play that's just like anybody that's playing behind LeBron James or Kobe Bryant well, you know, Kobe now, he might be a little... Well, the angry. old Kobe. The old Kobe. <laughs> oh, the young Kobe. The young Kobe. Okay, there so, you go. So, you know... Um you know, I just tell them I don't want I don't want them to be in a situation where my senior year, when I should have been working hard my junior year, because I transferred to Jackson State from a junior college, I should have been working my butt off my junior year to prepare me to have an outstanding senior year, as opposed to the light bulb going on my senior year. I should have been preparing myself. So that's the same thing I was telling Shamaya. You don't have to wait until your junior year and your senior year to step up and be a leader to step up and be great you can be great now and if I know that you have that inside of you I'm going to be on you every day to pull that out of you now there was a moment during the championship game during our broadcast I saw you she had just got Shamaya had just gotten her second foul and she was looking a little down and dejected and I made a comment of it during the during the broadcast how you took her and you told her hey I can't lose you right now, mm -hmm. and I need you. And it's those little things that people don't see. It's easy to get somebody six foot four and say, "Go play the post mm -hmm. and knock down anybody." But when you building that confidence and and letting them know that they are a key integral part of this team's success, that's coaching at its best. Well, you you have to coach them up. You know, I know one thing about Shamai is she needs a little loving sometimes. And you have to let her know it's going to be okay. She's an emotional ball player. I mean, she feels that, that she's been mistreated or slighted, you know, from time to time. And she'll show that. And I just thought it was too important. That moment was too important for her to get caught up in the last call and the last, you know, the last possession or whatever. You got to be you got to be present. And I told her that moment. I said, Shamaya, I need you. And I cannot afford for you to worry about one bogus call and we lose this game. We need you. Your team needs you. You got to step up. You got to be a big girl right now. You got to come out ready to play. She said, Coach, I got you. There you go. Now, I'm about to mess with you now. I told you we can go on lift. I'm leaning over here to you now. You can go on lift that interim off of that now. What you <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, you know, Dr. Wright met with, uh, met with me uh, prior to uh, the tournament. Uh, okay. A couple weeks before the tournament. So the, the title actually was uh, is, ha, has already been lifted. Well, very good. We, we've just been in, in negotiation, I guess, if that's the, the, the political term to say, uh, <laughs> for the last couple of weeks. But not really. Well, I mean, we're just talking about contract, not not anything just well, just big or anything like hey, that. All I say is add another zero. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be here. I, just I, I, be I understand here. that, but add another zero. And since you just want to be here, give me what's on the other zero. Is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> Coach Don Brown, uh, SWAC champion, her first year, but the fourth time around, uh, her first year as the, as the head lady in charge. Let me first and say this uh, to you, and I've said it off the air, but I would say thank you for allowing the Open Mic Broadcast Network to, to be a part of of this process to be a part of the family mm -hmm. you know we we look at it as family and we thank you very very much mm -hmm. for allowing us on this journey and we're going to be pulling for you i'm going to be texting you uh <laughs> getting my phone interviews in yes. however i can get in yes. but let you know that we really appreciate the opportunity to cover you all thank you so much um i think you guys have done a wonderful job and just continue to continue to support support our lady panthers all right coach don brown with the lady panthers we're going to take a break and we'll be right back we are live from Buffalo Wild Wings in Cypress, Texas. It is Selection 2014. The Lady Panthers will be going to take on the University of Connecticut Huskies. My name is Mike Prince, and we'll be right back.
Hello, this is Mike Prince with the Open Mic Broadcast Network. I would like to personally extend an invitation to you and ask if you would join forces with us by becoming a listening partner at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Your annual subscription of $24 would allow us to produce Waller County related programs with a dynamic lineup that we have, such as live broadcast coverage for our sporting events and community parades that we have joy at bringing you throughout the year. For more more information on becoming a listening partner, dial 832-213-8824, or you can simply send an email to ombnetwork at gmail.com. Be sure to visit our website at www.ktorradio.com. Thank you for all the support and the love that you've shown us here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, and we look forward to joining forces with you. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are live here at Buffalo Wild Wing in Cypress, Texas, special edition of the Sports Report from the Open Mic Broadcast Network. And I have been now joined by the vindicated four-time champion, Loran Washington. How you doing, girl? I'm fine. You fine? Yes, sir. Okay, look, you, you've been playing with a chip on your shoulder since this tournament. So you said I asked the question prematurely, but I'm going to ask you the question again. You feel like you were slighted, girl? Yeah, I feel like I was um, definitely overlooked for the um, four years I've been playing at Purdue. You know, I brought a lot to the table to help the teams win. And um, I just feel like my work going noticed. But at the end of the day, as long as my team um, get the overall win, then I'm happy, you know. So you, you, you got four rings to walk off and show with it, and you're ready to go. Now you're going to be going to the East Coast, taking on University of Connecticut. What's your thoughts on that? Um, I don't know. I just... Hope it's a good experience. We have a good turnout, you know. You have a good turnout? Yeah. Yeah, you're going to have a good turnout. It's still March, so, you know, everybody yeah. can still be yeah. upset. Yeah. Hey, anything can happen. And and I, you, you know the story of David and Goliath? <laughs> yes. Okay. David wasn't given a chance, right? Mm -hmm. but, but David found a way. And all I'm asking that you do is just find a way. Doesn't matter how we get done, but, but know that it can be done. Now, let's talk about you being a part of history. You, four-time champion. Uh, did you ever think this in your wildest imagination when you first stepped on the yard at Prairie View? No. Um, I didn't expect to go, you know, 4-0, but I expected us to have some success. But I don't know. It's kind of... It's kind of cool, you know. I was the first. I, everybody been telling me that I've been the first person um, to come through Prairie to go four and zero straight four years. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's it's kind it's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. You kind of cool right now. You gonna be all right. <laughs> you look at all. No, did your mom make it over here today? No, I think she's actually at work. She's actually at work, but no problem. Well, look, Loran, um, it's got to be a good feeling for you. You coming out of Houston, you know, Booker T. Washington High School in the house representing. Uh, an opportunity for TSU, and you end up in Prairie View, then you end up beating TSU for your last championship. How does that one feel? Um, it felt good being at home um, in front of a lot of friends and family, um, especially winning at home, especially my last year. I don't know. It was just a bittersweet moment. A bit, a bit, of, a bit of sweet moment? Yeah. Okay. Now, Loran, uh, we are thanking you so much for the opportunity to uh, speak with you on this uh, is there anyone you'd like to give a shout out to before we get a chance my grandma again <laughs> your grandma yes okay and tell you what's your grandma's name roxy thompson roxy thomas say hi granny hey granny all right well look miss loran washington uh look you're an mvp in our eyes you're a champion thank you for representing from the class of 93 i don't know what she was doing in 93 how were you in 1993 one years old. Oh, <laughs> my God. I guess you say, don't call me old. Wait till we get off the air before you call me. <laughs> okay. Miss Loran Washington with the Lady Panthers. We're going to take another break, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll be right back. You listen to the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the official voice of Walla County Athletics.
What if I told you that for $36, you could make a big difference? At $36 a year, you can become a listening partner with the Open Mic Broadcast Network. This annual donation would help us continue the success of our broadcast throughout Walla County. Visit our website at ktorradio.com and become a listening partner today. Serving the community through faith and athletics, the Open Mic Broadcast Network. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are here at Buffalo Wild Wing. It is selection where the selection has already been made. And the Lady Panthers, we've gone to the University of Connecticut to take on the Lady Huskies. I have with me now Sports Information Director, Mr. Ryan Magenti. And Ryan, what's your thoughts and opinions, man? Well, we've kind of speculated we would either go to the number one overall or at the NCAA want to bring everyone. It's Connecticut, and we played them in 2012. It wasn't in Connecticut. It was, I think it was, it was in Bridgeport, but this is actually on the University of Connecticut campus this time. So that should be an exciting time, and I know they're booking flights and getting everything ready. Now explain your role as a sports information director on getting prepared for really a short notice trip like this. Well, I'm trying to figure it out uh, as I go now because in, in the past, even though the team has made four straight postseason appearances, I was the men's basketball contact. Well, now this is my first time having the opportunity to cover the women due to the departure of my assistant. So now I have to deal with some of the administrative stuff uh, that comes along with this trip. And then plus add it on to the other sports that's going on. So now tomorrow we have a, obviously we have a baseball game tomorrow and one this week. And I have to figure out how to juggle my schedule to make sure everything is covered so, you know, there won't be a big gap once we return. Well, that's a good problem to have, though, right? That's yeah. <laughs> I said even you – know, yeah, I was. that's why I wanted the men to win also the other night because I said that would have been a great problem to have. How can I juggle two NCAA trips plus my on-campus obligations in a week? I was kind of interested just to see how I'd be able to do it, but <laughs> we got 50% of it, so that's 50% problem I'd rather have that a lot of people in the country wish they could have uh, right now. Well, we are here live at Buffalo Wild Wings. It seems like they've turned up the televisions around here as this is St. Patrick's Day, and I forgot about that. And this place is almost to capacity, and it's probably going to be some adult beverages flowing here after a while if they're not already. Now, Ryan, uh, uh, summarize what you've seen from the tale of three seasons with these Lady Panthers. Well, for, for the first well, four overall since I've been back, and uh, I came back when there was a, I caught Coach Cooper Dykes last year and injuries derailed that team from, to me that was probably one of the best teams we've had during her tenure because she had a Baylor transfer who was recruited by UConn ironically, but that team suffered injuries, they didn't see that season out. The next year Coach Wilson took over with a, almost a new roster. Then that began that tournament run they became known to uh teams been known to make and i watched the team grow and they lost latia puff williams from last year and everyone once again was like well who's gonna step up jeanette jackson was just a point guard on the team she wasn't known as a scorer so you didn't know what could she do production wise and lorraine washington was always just that glue player would do all the little things coach wanted to do and that would never would show up in the stat sheet so you really didn't know on paper what we would have had and I was one of I had no problem admitting it. I was in the middle. I didn't know what happened. New coach trying to figure out her system. You're replacing a SWAC tournament stud in Williams. So we just didn't know what was going to happen. They start off rough, but they like everyone said, this team has enough experience. They know the conference. That's the best thing about it. I noticed this team. They know the situations they're in. They know the SWAC. Once we got in the conference play, everything that they work towards start to jail. And they even took it up another level in March. That, sh that shocked me because we ended the season on a down note with a lost to Alcorn, which I was shocked. And then to come into the tournament, you got past Alabama State, who's tough. And, it's the, and then the steam rolled past Southern I mean, that was ease. A, that, yeah. that was almost like a joke, to be honest yeah. with you. And I, I, that was 
when I knew that these girls had fire in their eyes, man. And they rolled past him. I just couldn't believe it. And then I figured, well, at worst case scenario, they, I mean, they're up for the TSU game. But that Saturday, I said, the only thing is going to keep TSU win this game and keep this thing close is because it's a rivalry. And you know how rivalries go. Sometimes, you know, the emotions will overcome fatigue. And now, they did what I thought. Now, what you, what you need to know as I give a shout-out to Ronnie Campbell, who is listening by way of of KTORradio.com. He's a Waller community native. What's going on, Ronnie? You need to put some of that brisket on, man, and get it ready for us as we're down here. Um, uh, this Connecticut team, they're the top seed, you know. Um, people look at it on paper and would probably think that there's they don't have a dog's fight at getting this thing, but we've seen this team play against some very odds what do you think they're going to need to pull off the magical ride? Well, just by watching us play in postseason against the number one teams, it seemed like the last four years we've always had the number one team. In games like this, you have to, you can't make any mistakes. You almost have to play a flawless game. If you miss a shot, you better defend that basket because you can't, you have to match what Connecticut does. If they score 80, you got to score 81. If they miss 20 shots, you hope you make 20 shots. But you, the margin for error is razor thin. They're going to be bigger, obviously, at all your positions. They're going to be very athletic because they're playing with some of the number one people in the country on, the, you know, on their roster. You just have to match their intensity. You can't let them get behind. Well, we can't get behind and play catch-up. You want to at least play on a Connecticut's pace. And you want to stay, if you got to go down at the half, which I don't want us to be down, you want to at least stay within three, four points. You want to have a puncher's chance going to the second half because the past few tournaments, we've gone down early. We've made late runs, but we've never just started that second half where the commentators will be like, oh, man, this game is going down to where they want to stick to the game on their national coverage. Yes, sir. Now, uh, we do know that the Panthers are more than likely going to have to slow the pace down and work their half-court game to give them sense because the, the Huskies, the Lady Huskies, they love running up and down that court. Uh, we are uh, now being visited by the Sports Information Director. Uh, if you were listening to our broadcast coverage throughout the SWAG tournament, I have promoted him to Athletic Director, <laughs> but he's been now put back in his proper place, Mr. Ryan Magenti. Ryan, uh, this has really been uh, something nice for us to be a part of here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. We can't thank you guys enough for it with all the help uh, and support that you all have given us. And I really want to tell you again, thank you for this opportunity. And thank you also for allowing me to spend 20 minutes of my life on the air. And uh, <laughs> ironically, just coming back into work today, you start getting feedback and you, you know, from individuals who you just send a link out. What I do is just hit enter on the link. I don't know who opens it or whatever, because I don't, I don't target anyone specific when I send links out. But then I got a some feedback from some guys at work. It was like, man, you and Mike was pretty funny on the broadcast today. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know. You know, me, I just I have no problem admitting. I'm not an X and those guys. I just like to have humor and create, make it easy for you to listen in case the game gets tough. And I don't want you to turn your way. Because, you know, we have a million other things you can do in today's society. Yes, sir. But there's some of the feedback I got from my peers was it was an interesting sounding broadcast. We had fun. You can tell we had fun calling the game. And we weren't just there calling it. We were living and dying with the teams. And that's pretty much that was, you know, our intentions when I asked to join. I just said I wanted to share some of my emotion I've been channeling to the air through our listeners. And then get a chance to do it with you made it even better. So I just appreciate the opportunity. And we were here from the beginning, and now we're here at the end with it. And we just look forward to growing this relationship with the department down the road. Yes, sir. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, with that, we're going to take a break. Uh, we have been here now. It has been about an hour and a half. We've been having fun, man, just rolling right along. We're going to see if we can get Jeanette Jackson to come and be a part of us. As we get ready, you got something you want to say? Hey, one thing, uh, I see your wife and your kids rolling around in that maroon again. I thought I told you the other day, which I did <laughs> tell your wife. <laughs> put on some blue. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say where the blue comes from because I don't want to be accused of 
hey, promoting. Man, speak, speak your mind. Speak yeah, your I'm, saying, I'm saying, I mean, there's some Grimes County blue y'all can put on walking around here, y'all. You know, you get some credibility around here. <laughs> you know, we y- y'all get a Cy- we in Cypress ISD. You wear Walker colors, so they think that's Cy Fair. You wear that, you wear the Rattler jerseys, so you walk in, they know who you are, man. <laughs> so I'll work on it while you on there and see if I can get him a transfer over the next few weeks. So, you know. <laughs> Ryan Magenti yeah. and his expertise we're going to take a break and we'll be right back you're listening to special edition of the sports report live from buffalo wild wing go caleb come on hit a homer jesse let's go guys hey did you guys know that kids who play sports earn more money when they grow up (laughs) of course i i knew that hey did you guys know that kids who read books have a bigger vocabulary Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wow, Jinx. (laughs) Did you guys know that friendly children have more friends? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. I knew that. Did you guys know that winter babies are better at music? Everyone knows that. Oh, yeah? Yeah, It's pretty obvious. Yeah, Yeah. so obvious. Oh, hey, guys, did you know that most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Huh, I didn't know that. I'm pretty sure I knew that. I'm pretty sure you didn't. Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right car seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, we are live here from Buffalo Wild Wing in Cypress, Texas. Um, I have with me the all-time leading scorer for Prairie View A&M University, all the way from Las Vegas, Nevada, Miss <laughs> Jeanette Jackson. How you doing, Jeanette? I'm doing well. How you doing? All right. Well, look, let me first say. You didn't, you didn't wimp out on me in the last game. You played your 40 minutes. So. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, uh, we, uh, I give her a hard time. This young lady uh, has showed the uh, epitome of endurance, which is another travesty on. We won't even get into all that, but this girl goes all out and balls every night that I've seen her play. Uh, averaging, you want to say 38 minutes a game because you did wimp her out a couple of times <laughs> and played 38 minutes. But with all the dust has settled, with all the neglects and the overlook, how does this feel right here? Uh, it feels amazing. This is the greatest feeling that I felt uh, throughout all three years that I've been here. I think this the most. This one means the most to me. This one means the most to you, and why is that? Uh, because I felt like this year was harder. I mean, we lost so many people. We lost uh, we lost a head coach. We lost our sitting conditioning coach. We lost a lot of pieces to the puzzle. And so we had to try extra hard. So Now, explain that. You lose your head coach. You get your, your assistant coach, who now has to really change roles on you right now. And I, I was told to ask you about the rule book. Explain the rule book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the rule book is it's, it's a little pamphlet. We got this on the first day. We had our team meeting. We got a pamphlet. And it was a bunch of rules explaining what we can do, cannot, can and cannot do. And um, it, w- it was straight to the point what we could not do. And at the end, it was, our, it was a page where we had to sign and hand it back in. Oh, my. Yeah. So did you violate any of those rules in the rule book? No, sir, I did not. <laughs> I need my scholarship. You need it. <laughs> okay, now, you you explain now, Coach had to do a transition, but you guys have to transition now. What was it like for you all to now having someone that you were venting to about the top dog? Now she was the top dog, and you need somebody to vent to her about. <laughs> um, it wasn't really much of a transition, I think, because we all really liked Coach Brown. A lot as a person as a, and as a coach, we respected her. So, I mean, it was a great move. We, we still love her 
just as much. So. Just you love her just, just as, as much. much, and I'm pretty sure she loves you too. I shared with her Saturday was really the first time that I ever saw her show emotion. Mm -hmm. You know, at least in public. Right. You know, I've seen her blow up. I've seen her go. Off. But she cried. I said, man, she is a girl, <laughs> and she cried. So, what was that like to see her get emotional like that? Uh, I I really don't even know because I was emotional myself. Uh -huh. I was I was like overwhelmed because I had just lost my grandmother uh, okay. like the day before the game. So I mean I wanted to play for her and we all had dedicated the game for her. Okay. And uh, so it was emotional for for me as well. Well, my condolences go out to you for that. We did not even know that, but that shows the grit and determination that you show to play with a heavy heart like that. And I'm pretty sure that your grandma was smiling from heaven. Say, thank look at you, my baby you. go. Look at my <laughs> baby go. <laughs> now, look, you get ready to play the top-rated uh, team in the nation. Um, uh, people are already probably trying to count you out. How are you going to approach this game? Uh, like any other game, we're going to do a scout on it, um, come with the same mentality that we want to win and that we're going to compete. Going to compete and compete you shall do. Uh, I want to thank you. Uh, for representing this university, representing this community, representing your family with, with style, class, and dignity. Thank uh, you. It is, it is an honor and a blessing for an old man to be associated with such good young people. And I really mean that as an alumnus of this university, uh, as, a, as a person who's very active in the community, um, it was a joy to cover and bring these games and these interviews that you have done. I know that sometimes people forget that you're human, and what we try to do is let them see that you're more than just a basketball player. You're more than just a student. Mm -hmm. You're more than just a girl. You are a person that has a soul, and because of that, we want to take the opportunity to say thank you for allowing us to share that with the world. And thank you guys as well. All right. Anything you'd like to share before you get out of here? Um, no, thank you. Did you save me some chicken? You can have my box. It's right <laughs> over there. <laughs> All right, Jeanette Jackson, thank you so much, Mama. Thank we're going to take another break, and we're just about ready to wrap this thing up, but we are live from the Buffalo Wild Wings in Cypress, Texas. This is Mike Prince. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back. In the last 30 years, childhood obesity in America has tripled. Today, one in three kids is already overweight or obese. This is registered dietitian Melissa Joy Dobbins for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Good nutrition is key to fighting childhood obesity. These tips can help your child stay healthy. Recruit them to the kitchen. Preparing meals teaches kids about healthy foods like lean proteins, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and low-fat dairy. Make sure to get 60 minutes of physical activity every day. Make it a family activity. And avoid sugary or caffeinated beverages. Give kids water, low-fat milk, and 100% fruit juices. To keep your whole family healthy, see a registered dietitian and visit www.eatright.org. Encouraging you to eat right, I'm registered dietitian Melissa Joy Dobbins with the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Type 2 diabetes is a serious chronic health threat in America. It affects tens of millions of people. Many people who have the disease don't know it. Diabetes can cause health problems such as heart disease, strokes, amputations, and blindness. Talk to your doctor, get screened if you're at risk, and learn how to avoid becoming one of the millions of new cases of diabetes each year. You can help prevent type 2 diabetes. A message from CDC and HHS.
All right, Mike Prince here, and we're back here at Buffalo Wild Wings. Uh, yeah, we could we could get we can get you real quick, Coach, and then we'll come right back. All right, we we got people. Don't forget me now. Don't forget me now. All right, we are we are now going to be joined by the brother of the dove, <laughs> one flight above, five beta sigma in the world of girls, baby. What's up, Go Ma? Nothing much. Nothing much. <laughs> and, and enjoying the moment right now. Coach enjoying Tron Griffin, look. Your girls are now going to pack their bags to go toward the East Coast to take on the University of Connecticut, uh, the number one rated team in the nation. Uh, speaking with the girls, they say Coach Brown had already told them we're going to compete and we're going to give it all that we got. Uh, you know the heart of these young ladies, man, and, and tell us what we should be expecting. Um, I can tell you, you know, one, one thing about Coach Brown and she preaches to us and all the kids is we're not going to back down from no fight. Uh, the, the, the hashtag, the motto, you know, even throughout the tournament and right now has been war ready. So we're going to continue. We're going to prepare for UConn just as we would prepare for Texas Southern, Southern University, Alabama State. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to be looking at some film. We're going to start in the scout report and we're going to take them just like we would anybody else. Uh, we're, we're going into that game to compete and, and, and to show, you know, people on, on the national television stage, uh, you know, what we do at Prairie View. And that's Prairie View basketball for 40 minutes. Yes, sir. Now, you are part of the me act and we talked about this before and um let's be honest man for whatever reason well i know what the reason but i'm not gonna get all political and everything <laughs> like that people don't want to give credit to the southwestern athletic conferences to the me and to the ciaa's but the 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 tournament that was held down at the toyota center this past week was top class it was top it was. class. And how do you, as a coach, continue to get that message out that there's quality basketball played in this conference? Um, I, I think that, that comes a lot from uh, recruiting one, uh, the, the visibility that Prairie View has in recruiting. We're sitting in the same gyms uh, with the UConn coaches, the Notre Dame coaches, the LSU coaches. We sit in those same gyms with those coaches all summer long. And believe it or not, you know, we have a lot of the friends, Coach Brown and I, Coach Moore, we have a lot of friends at those universities, and they do recognize Prairie View and m They do recognize what we have, the prestige, and how well we have been doing and the success we've had in making it to the tournament. As far as uh, getting the message out, you know, it's, it's one of those things where with the NCAA and, and, and the people that select these brackets and everything, there's so many factors and so many variables that go into selecting where you play, who you play, your seating and stuff like that. At the end of the day, we coach basketball. So, we, you know, we're going to come out, we're going to continue to do the, the job that we do, and that's coaching basketball, and these girls come out and play as hard as they can. And wherever the chips may fall, you know, whether we're a 16 seed or a 12 seed, you know, whoever we're matched up with, we still got to come out and play Prairie View basketball. So my question for you is, do you have your, your big coat ready <laughs> for that East Coast winter? <laughs> I definitely, definitely was not prepared uh, to be going to the East Coast for right now. And the funny thing is, is when we uh, we went to New York this this Christmas time for a tournament, and I went home uh, for Christmas. I actually left my big coat in oh, Jacksonville, my. Florida. Well, so there's a Macedonia call, people. We need a big coat now. <laughs> Brother Tron is not a small fry now. Well, how tall are you? Six five. Six seven. Six man. That's a, this is a lot of brother, and I ain't gonna even try to guess your weight, man. But if anybody got a coat, well, let's, how about we go slaughter that that cow right now? And I mean, no, a bull. We need to slaughter a bull <laughs> and get this man a leather coat in time. Well, look, uh, Griffin, man, this has really been a a blast for us here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Uh, we counted a labor of love, a, a joy to be a part of it and I've been thanking the staff I thank you all for allowing us to be there to give people some of the insights of what this program is all about what this university is all about and uh, just want to take the time to reflect and just say thanks man really appreciate no it no problem we thank you we thank everybody man it's, it's been a huge support this year just like I said you know in the interview after the game on Saturday um, you know it's been a, it, it's been a long year it's been highs it's been lows uh, and one thing I can say, and I text all the girls today, you know, being able to sit back and watch the game on replay on ESPN and just really look at, you know, how these girls came together and how hard they played those three games in this tournament last week. You know, it, it's, it's exciting. I'm looking forward to the kids we got returning back. I mean, every, everything from A to Z about this program, from Coach Brown all the way down to our managers, 
it's just been phenomenal this year, and I'm glad everybody's getting the opportunity to experience this. You know, this is only my second time as a coach experience, experiencing this, last year being my first. And, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's definitely a joy, and it's it's a feeling that you can't replace with anything else. Well, well Connecticut show is different from Waco, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's true. <laughs> that's definitely true. Well, look, now you're, you're going to be playing on Sunday. Did they give you a tip-off time for Sunday yet? Uh, it looks like we're tipping off at 8 p.m. on Sunday. I think we'll be the only women's game on Sunday. All the other uh, NCAA tournament women's game will be Saturday. So it's looking like we tip off at 8 p.m. Uh, All right, 8 p.m. will be the tip off. Um, um, look, man, I'm going to have to uh, try to try to watch and text, you know, like we do. Uh, for those who are not aware, uh, we're not able to make all the travel, but I do keep in contact with them. I text them, hey, good game. Even if it was a tough one, hey, keep your head up and get home safe. And like I said, I thank you all so much for allowing us to be a part of it. Uh, is there anything you want to leave our side with as we get ready to go out this segment, man? Just like I always do, you know, thank you to our fans. We love and appreciate you and continue to, you know, stick with us and watch us uh, this Sunday as we take on UConn. Let us, let, let us hear you cheering all the way from Texas up there in UConn. Yes, sir. Now, before we – man, it was a pretty good show out tonight, too, wasn't oh, yeah. it, for this, oh, yeah. for this deal, man. So, let's – PV Nation, let's go ahead. And as, as – uh, I'm going to take a line – from uh, old Chatterbox, he's another one of our frat brothers. He's the voice of uh, the uh, Tigers from TSU. Uh -huh. He said, yeah, rub your yeah. radio, put your hand on the radio, and, and let's bring that victory in for the Panthers. I don't care who we're playing. I believe that these girls got what it takes That's to it. make it happen. That's it. All right, Coach Tron Griffin, thank you so much. We're going to take another break, and we'll be back. You're listening to the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the official voice of Waller County Athletics. All right, man. All right. Hello, this is Mike Prince with the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Where did Washington go? I would go? like to personally extend an invitation to you. Okay, tell me we're ready. And ask if you would join forces with us by becoming a listening partner at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Your annual subscription of $24 would allow us to produce all the kind of related programs with the dynamic product that we have, such as live broadcast coverage for our sporting events and community parades that we have joy at bringing you throughout the year. More information on becoming a listening partner, dial 832 213 you can send an email to OMB Network. How you doing, my man? Alright. Be sure to visit our website at www.ktor. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Thank you for all the support and the love. Now we got this break and we're gonna take another minute and we'll be back in. Now you won't hear me talking, but you'll hear you'll see. All right, welcome back. We're live here at the Buffalo Wild Wings. Selection has been made. The Lady Panthers will be traveling to the East Coast to take on the University of Connecticut Lady Huskies. I have with me Mr. Fred Washington, the man of the hour. How you doing, sir? I'm fine. I, I don't know that I'm the man of the hour, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm you, happy to be here. Well, you've been here in, as the interim athletic director uh, for the last three of these four years, so you're just as part of this thing as everybody else. What's this like for you to see this unfold outside that realm? Well, I, I, I think it's a, a testament to what we were trying to do with the program as a whole. You know, our goal was to create a program, not a, not a team that could be successful one year, two years, bringing in, you know, quick transfer kids or something like that. We wanted to build a program that as we take and change out coaches or change out players, that we can continue to be successful. And I think now we're on our third coach, and uh, all three of the coaches that have came in and, and bought into our system have, have won a championship, and I think that's speaks So value. what is the key to that system for it to work 
as it's working. I, I think you, you you start by recruiting quality student athletes, both academically and uh, in their craft. As in this instance, is basketball. So you you recruit you recruit quality basketball players that are also good students, and you put in their coaches that are dedicated, hardworking, and, and have a, a system uh, that can be successful. And I think at least the last three times in a row we've been able to do that. Yes, sir. And and there's a lot of moving parts to make that happen. And, and I'm going to refer back to even when we played, we wasn't that good, but we were graduating. Right. And, and there's always been that Panther pride that, yes, you can play, but when your eligibility is up, you got to have that sheepskin to say, sure. I've earned it, so now I can go out here and be productive in life. Yeah, we, I think we've consistently been serious and focused about our students graduating and going on to be productive citizens in the state of Texas and beyond. Uh, that that's the staple of our program to get again good quality student athletes like I said that are good students and good student athletes so we've, we've done that and you know as long as we continue to do that I think you're gonna continue to see us be successful it's not easy to win you know four championships in a row at, at any level in, in any category you can you know you'll hear people say different things on, on how you win or why you win but winning four championships in a row speaks volumes. I mean, there's not that many programs in the history of our conference uh, that have done that. Uh, obviously, that's something that has escaped us for a while. We're glad to be a part of that, that, that lineage and that history of greatness. Now, the last team to do it from the women's point of view were the Grambling State Lady Tigers. They did it from 96 to 99, right. and there was a big gap. That was, a, that was might as well say, 13, 14-year right. gap in between, which is the rarity, and then to have the all-time leading scorer along on this team, and then the Loran Washingtons and the Larissa Scotts who played through the injuries and everything, it's got to just speak uh, volumes to you from the administrative point of view that not only are these athletes successful on the court, but they're successful in the classrooms, and they're successful walking up and down the boulevards in the streets. That has to be something proud to be a part of. You know, it... it, it uh very satisfying for me uh, to see students come in. Many of these students that are here now, as you mentioned, started during my tenure. You know, I go back, and the first student athlete that uh, that I met with recruiting uh, was Latia Williams. Latia graduated, and it was it was very interesting for me as an administrator to watch Latia come in as a as a freshman, uh, play in a very uh, routine role. If you heard the, if, if you heard Coach Brown's interview where she talked about the student athletes last year, where a lot of them were role players and they kind of fit in to the system and they learned how you know they learned how to play purview basketball and per, play in a purview system. You know it was interesting for me to see that happen firsthand with Latia and now to see it. You know Jeanette came in a couple of years ago. This is her junior year now, and to see her. You know, she played as a freshman, though, which is which is not very common. Uh, but she played a a, a, a big role. Uh, but we had two big scores in uh, La Latia and uh, uh, Jaquandria, and then the, the other young lady's name escapes me right at the top of my head. Kiara, Kiara Etienne. They were all scores, and so uh, Jeanette played more of a facilitator role. Uh, but she was recruited as a scorer. And so we knew that she could score. And then this year in, in, in the system, the system demanded her to use more of those skills. So she played off the ball at the two, uh, was able to get those shots up, and uh, they were able to mix it up. When, when people attacked the, the guard play, uh, Lorraine played primarily the guard, but she, in the last few years, was more of a defensive stopper. They brought her in to handle the ball and play defense. This year she had the ball in her hand a lot more, and Jeanette got to play the two. But when they pressed Jeanette, uh, Lorraine, you're able to go to Jeanette, who's a natural guard. So they, they have a really good system in place. Both of those athletes uh, are, are amazing. We expect that Lorraine will graduate this year on time, uh, and then Jeanette will have another year. And But there's a lot of good players. Shamai's a sophomore. Uh, the other young lady is a, is a freshman uh, that played a lot of quality minutes. So we're, we're excited about where we are as a program, and we expect this from all our teams. Our, not mentioned today is our, our bowling team is back-to-back -back champions. Uh, this this Friday, they start working to defend their championship and hopefully to bring home a third in a row. That's uh, right. But, as we want to edge Coach Glenn White and the bowling crew on, I have Fred Washington, 
uh, administrator slash athletic director slash <laughs> alumnus. Former athletic director. <laughs> and, and everything. Uh, look, I, I, I want to say thank you all so much for allowing us to be able to share with the rest of the community and the world on uh, the world of PV athletics and how everything is unfolded, but to even bring that positive spin on the university itself and, and just what a great jewel that we have in Prairie View a and University. And uh, as we get ready to head out of this segment, is there anything you'd like to share with us before we, we close this segment out? Uh, just that we appreciate uh, everybody's support. You know, uh, making this program successful is, is, is a testament to so many things. You know, the fans that encourage the, the young ladies and the young men as they walk around, the faculty and staff that help prepare them in the classroom, the advisors that, that keep them motivated and going in the right direction. And, and that's just a, a, a small token of the, the group that comes together. You know, at, at Prairie View, we pride ourselves on being a family. Uh, we think that, you know, we if you hear Mr. Jackson talk about the, taking a family to raise uh, it takes a, a family to raise a village and all these different different concepts that come from many places but we we believe that everybody that touches our student athletes plays a role in their success and we really do appreciate it i think he likes to say it takes teamwork to make a dream work oh yeah yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's one of his sayings too yeah. he's got a lot of them <laughs> well look thank you so much sir uh the lady panthers will be going to take on the university of connecticut that game will be sunday uh, we'll be at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll find out more details and information as it unfolds. We want to take a break, and we'll be back with more special edition of a sports report live from Buffalo Wild Wing in Cypress, Texas. And we'll be right back. Let's go, Caleb! Come on, hit a homer, Jesse. Let's go, guys. Hey, did you guys know that kids who play sports earn more money when they grow up? <laughs> of course. I, I knew that. Hey, did you guys know that kids who read books have a bigger vocabulary? Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wow, jinx. <laughs> did you guys know that friendly children have more friends? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's true, I knew that. Did you guys know that winter babies are better at music? Everyone knows that. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah it's pretty obvious. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. obvious. Oh, hey, guys, did you know that most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Huh, I didn't know that. I'm pretty sure I knew that. I'm pretty sure you didn't. Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right car seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. In the last 30 years, childhood obesity in America has tripled. Today, one in three kids is already overweight or obese. This is registered dietitian Melissa Joy Dobbins for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Good nutrition is key to fighting childhood obesity. These tips can help your child stay healthy. Recruit them to the kitchen. Preparing meals teaches kids about healthy foods like lean proteins, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and low-fat dairy. Make sure to get 60 minutes of physical activity every day. Make it a family activity. And avoid sugary or caffeinated beverages. Give kids water, low-fat milk, and 100% fruit juices. To keep your whole family healthy, see a registered dietitian and visit www.eatright.org. Encouraging you to eat right, I'm registered dietitian Melissa Joy Dobbins with the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. I'm so uh, glad that absolutely. I go to PVU. I have with me Nico Matthews, class of 2008. You're a neophyte in my eyes, but welcome. <laughs> He's representing the Panther backers. And before we do that, I want to give a shout-out to Raymond Holly. Uh, he is listening uh, through uh, this live broadcast. Appreciate you, sir. Go, Mob. And, and keep on doing what you do. Let them know that the Open Mic Broadcast Network is alive and in effect. 
Nico, how you doing, my man? I'm good, man. I'm glad to be here at the PV Women's Basketball Selection Party, man, uh, four years in a row. Yes, sir. So that's a great number. We're becoming spoiled, huh? That's right. We get used to this every year. We're looking forward to it. Come here, eat, eat some wings and french fries. and. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, don't say that too loud, man. That, that sounds so weird. So when, what kind of wings did you have? I Man, I had the barbecue. You had the barbecue? I like the barbecue wings. I had some teriyaki. Okay, okay. But the barbecue sound good, right? <laughs> they are good. They are good. Get some to take home with you. I, I, I don't think they're going to make it home. I don't think they're going to make it home. I hear you. <laughs> Look here, man. This is You just said it's been four years. Now, you represent the uh, Panther backers, the Panther backers, uh, along with the Prairie View Athletic Club and so many instrumental uh, entities that help. Uh, do undergird some of these things right. that it takes for these Panthers to be successful. Explain to the people what it's been like for you to be a part of an organization like that. Uh, to be a part of it is tremendous because uh, when I was a student at Prairie View from 02 to 08, uh, I worked in athletics and I saw the downfall where we came short for our program in terms of resources. And I think to have a stellar program in any conference, uh, you got to have alumni support. So to see the Panther backers to be a part of it, to be a part of the foundation, uh, it's, a, it's a great cause because I'm a student. I was a student, and now I'm an alumni, and I'm able to give back in a, in a, in a productive way to benefit these young people who are trying to be successful in life. Very and so good. they've come to Prairie View to play sports, but also to get, to get education and, and, and get a degree which is the main part of, of your child going to college. Yes, sir. So yes, it's great sir. to do that. Yes, sir. Now, I understand, Nico, that that you you also do some, some preaching on the side. Is that what yes, sir. I'll be preaching my first sermon this Sunday, 3.30, uh, 4022 Rutland Street, Houston, Texas, Paul Praise Christian Church, where my pastor is Pastor James E. Walker, Sr. All right, then, look, man, uh, now, I don't know if they told you, man, you know, but Every now and then, I, I dropped one for Jesus, them too. Well, go on, take it to the cross real quick. <laughs> <laughs> he died one third. One, what, what, but he hey, hey. He, he got up. Hey, he with all power. With all power. Not just some, but with all. All of it, Reverend. All, all of it. I hear you. Wanna, we don't want to mess nobody up right now. I got Nico Matthews, one of the Panther backers, class of 2008. The Lady Panthers are going to be taken on the University of Connecticut. Uh, they're going to have to travel. It's a short notice thing, but they're going to be geared up. A lot of people not going to give them much of a chance. They're going against the top team in the nation, the nation. and that's to be expected, but it still doesn't take away what they've already accomplished. Well, one thing I would say is that we've been there before. Two years ago, we, we went to Connecticut, and we put up a dog fight against Connecticut. Uh, we didn't go and get our, our butts whooped. Uh, we, it, it was a dog fight, and we made them work for that win. Uh, so they're going to look at that game, and so I think it puts a little fear in their hearts of Connecticut and, and, and Coach uh, Gino, our, our, Coach Gino, and uh, we're not going to be a team that's going and get our bus, but we're going to put up a fight. Yes, sir. And so, uh, you know, last time with Lorraine Washington was a freshman. This year she's a senior. Um, so she has an experience that will help with those other kids who haven't been there before. And so I'm, I'm, I'm confident that we can go out there and really represent Prairie View with pride and integrity. Well, I tell you what, Coach Brown has made it clear that they are going to compete and she's not going to settle for anything less. And it's just something about that woman when she said, I believe it. <laughs> right, and that's her attitude. And, and, and one thing about being around sports is players take on their coach's attitude. So her attitude is being competitive, and I think that they're going to do, do just that. Yes, sir. Now, a lot of people might not be aware, but the Panther backers have a big golfing tournament coming up April the 28th. And it's going to be right down the road in Cypress, Texas. You want to tell them about that? Yes, we have a we have our annual golf tournament coming up. Uh, I think I believe it's Black Horse Ranch. No, um, actually, it's going to be the we're going to. You keep talking, and we're going to pull the spot. And uh, we, we're period. looking for teams and individuals to come out and support our uh, our program, our golf tournament, which benefits the Panther backers. All the funds that go into the Panther backers, they go to the children. We take nothing. Uh, say, we, that again, say that again. All the money goes to the children. Not we take nothing. Money. All of it. Not administrative. No, sir. Fees. No, sir. No, no fees. Not, not all no fees. Of we don't get paid nothing. Um, we give our time. We give our money. We give our resources. And all the money goes to these kids. We, 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 do, we do things out there for our children, for our athletes. We feed them. Um, we buy books. We do book vouchers. 
Uh, whenever a coach calls and there's a need, we try to meet that need. So this money, all of it, every single solitary penny goes back to um, our, our student athletes at Prairie Valley University to well, support our, our cause in this golf tournament. Well, if I wanted to get in contact. Yes. If you want to get in contact, you can call Wonder Bookman. Phone number 281-748-5690. That's 281-748-5690. Her name is Wanda Bookman. Uh, she works alongside Dino uh, as the uh, president of the Panther Backers. Uh, the Panther Backers. She works alongside him, and she will have all the information for you. So if you, if you want to talk to Wanda Bookman, call her 281 281- Seven four eight five six nine zero. There you go. Then she's okay. looking at. She kind of looked at you like, "What that, are you talking about?" Well, that's my auntie. I, I, gave, I gave the whole world her yeah, phone number. Yeah, you, yeah, you got the whole world a phone but it, number. But it's all right. It's, it's for good cause. It's, it's all for good. good cause. And look, and don't be calling trying to take her out for a date because we'll whoop you. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you got some money. Now, if you got some money, come on. <laughs> but I'm going too because I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, look, stay right there. You know, we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Open Mic Broadcast Network and a special edition of the Sports Report live from Buffalo Wild Wings in Cypress, Texas, and we'll be right back. The Prairie View a and University Panther Backers. The Panther Backers are proud supporters of Prairie View Athletics and would like to invite you to their 19th annual Celebrity Golf Tournament. Be held Monday, April 28, 2014, at Cypress Lake Golf Course. Their location is 18700 Cypress Wood Drive in Cypress, Texas, 77429. For more information, dial 713-417-2090. The Waller Bulldogs, the Hempstead Bobcats, the Royal Falcons, and the Prairie View a and University Panthers. It's baseball season, and the Open Mic Broadcast Network will be there to give you all the scores and updates of Waller County baseball. Keep it locked right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the station designed with you in mind. Serving the community through faith and athletics. The Open Mic Broadcast Network. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are coming toward an end of what has been a wonderful event here at Buffalo Wild Wing. Uh, speaking with the management at Buffalo Wild Wing, they're going to allow us to do this again. So you all expect to see some live remote broadcasts here from the Open Mic Broadcast Network in the near future. A great atmosphere, good thing. But I'm going to have to get some wings, man, before we and, get and, out and, of here. and try to barbecue, man. you got to try, try to barbecue. barbecue. This is a good atmosphere, man. It's, it's, now, Nino, it's, I mean, Nino, I'm going to Nino Brown over there from <laughs> <laughs> don't whoop me, you know, because I am my brother's keeper. That's right, you are, you are. You Look, are. Nico, now, if I don't like them, 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 them uh, barbecue wings, I guess you'll take care of them for me. Huh? I certainly will. <laughs> I, I, I have no problem being the seconds, the thirds, and leftovers, and the ones you leave on the table. <laughs> Hey, well, one thing about it, when you're a Baptist preacher, you eat some fried well, chicken. Well, talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the John Red stood still, and the pig went oink, I, I, and the cow I, said, I, <laughs> I ain't got no offer now, Reverend. I ain't got no offer tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Ladies and well, gentlemen. we having fun, we man. We're having fun here, and we, <laughs> we're going to have to be running out of time because I got to get down the road. They looking at me. They hear me go, woo They thought Little Richard was in town. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to go. I want to thank you all so much. Thank you for listening. Thank you for PV Nation. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? The Lady Panthers are going to strap up and take on the University of Connecticut Lady Huskies Sunday at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Be there and listen to the Sports Report Monday through Friday at 8 a.m., where we do it like nobody else can, serving the community through faith and athletics. My name is Mike Prince saying God bless, good night, and we'll see you on the other side.
The Sports Report is a production of the Open Mic Broadcast Network located in Purdue, Texas. Serving the community through faith and athletics, the Open Mic Broadcast Network is the official voice of Waller County Athletics.